The story is that first past the post system was a system that people in 18th century decided that it is good for the time. Um, but uh, for the time it was revolutionary. That was the reason that it was called revolution in the United States. Um, this thinking that uh, everybody's opinion can even be technically collected was a revolutionary idea. And this method, uh, which is called relative majority, plurality, first past the post, uh, this works very well if you have two, uh, two alternatives. Okay? And if you don't have two alternatives, then um, it will cause a problem. So look at this. Here we have three alternatives. Um, what do you think we should buy? Okay, it is a party. We have one choice to buy something. Um, uh, you know, these many people like uh, to eat orange. These people like ta tangerine, and these people like banana. Okay, what should we buy? Like using the terminology of John Stuart Mill to maximize the utility which is basically the pleasure of most people. But these people, I think they like something orange. <laughs> yes. And banana is, those who like banana, they like more energy. Um, and they're different, okay? And basically, this system, the first past the post system, um, which one will the, will be elected under first past the post system? Banana. Banana. Okay, and then those people who wanted to uh, uh, have orange or tangerine, they have to go with banana. And actually, we cannot ever prove if banana is the best choice or which one of them is the best choice because in first past the post we have missing information. We don't know if the second choice of the people who liked orange is tangerine or, or not, okay? But, of course, all of you have speculated that the second choice of these people would be this and the second choice of these people will be this. Uh, however, we didn't ask them and everything we say about the true nature of the feelings of these people is based on a speculation. We didn't ask them, so we don't know, actually. So the solution is very simple, and the, the solution is that we can uh, we simply have to um, ask them uh, their choices. So this is a, a more realistic example that can happen in any society. This is a society in which uh, there is a strong majority of people who want to decrease taxes. And there is a minority of people that want to increase taxes. Basically, any voting system that you choose, any, will lead to decrease taxes party uh, uh, candidate to be elected. We have two alternatives. We want to make one choice. First past the post works very well. Now we introduce, you know, somebody comes and says, we have to decrease tax for businesses because government needs money. How can we decrease tax for everyone? And then there are people who say that uh, we have to decrease tax for everyone. So still the people who make the, you know, they like to decrease the taxes, they are still the majority. But they have this, this difference in opinion that should we decrease the tax for, uh, for everyone or for only for companies? What would be the choice of these people if we use first past the post? Increase taxes. Increase taxes. Okay? So this is not maximizing the utility of most people. A huge majority of people uh, are interested in decreasing tax. But what will happen is that their representative who believes in increased tax and, and belongs to a party that wants to increase tax will go to the parliament. There are two major problems with this first past the post system. And the first problem is that at the local level, in this specific city, people are interested that someone who represents their ideas to go to the, uh, to the legislative assembly. Okay? And first past the post doesn't satisfy that. 
the, the technical reason for that is that from here to here, what happened is that uh, an idea which was similar to one of the alternatives was proposed, and that causes what is called water splitting or a spoiler effect. Okay? And then in the United States, this happens every 10 years. Like they say, oh, Ralph Nader shouldn't be a candidate, because if he's a candidate, then Democrats will vote for Ralph Nader, and he's a spoiler. And then 10 years before that, they say um, Ross Pro uh, shouldn't be a loss. Uh, in places that are following first past the post uh, strategy, and it has hurt people, but uh, uh, it has, you know, uh, um, we will see that most uh, most past colonies of United Kingdom have switched, but the United States has not switched, uh, um, and Canada is in the, we are in the next 10 days in the process of switching from this system. Um, so, uh, the, this at the local level, there are two major problems as the result of this vote splitting. One is that a, a minority can win while a vast majority oppose them. Therefore, the representative of the community, that blue guy, is not actually representing the ideas of most people who want their taxes to be decreased. The other problem is that uh, the opinion of me in this jurisdiction will not be represented. 70% of people, let's say 65% of people in this jurisdiction, their ideas will, can be not represented um, in there because this person belongs to a party and that party uh, wants that member of parliament to vote for that specific opinion. Okay. Uh, so this is, uh, this is what uh, First Past the Post does. By asking the highest ranking, is by, by giving you an option to choose what you like, like this is one of the uh, voting members of the society. In the first past the post, we say, what do you like? Choose one person. This is how the current ballots that we vote are formed. They ask you, in North Van, which one of these candidates do you like? And you vote for one. And the other person votes for the candidate that he likes more. This method hides the other preferences. Hides the fact that this person, uh, if he don't decrease the business tax, he would like to decrease everyone's tax. But we don't ask them their second vote, therefore uh, this first past the post uh, hides the information. Now, some historical facts. These are the past elections in BC 40% of people voted for NDP in 1991, and they got majority. Complete majority. And you may say, okay, that's relative majority. I am a relativist, fine. Then in 1996, 39% of people voted for liberal, and NDP got 100% of power. Okay, this is the only time that I guess everybody must be happy. You know, everybody who is a Democrat. Uh, 57, a Democrat doesn't mean Democratic Party. So anyway, so 57% of people who have uh, voted for Liberal Party, they got 77 seats. You can say that the majority got, uh, you know, got the power. And after that, Liberals were in power when they had 45%, 45%, and 44%. Uh, then we had uh, the last election in which liberals got more votes than NDP, but NDP is in power. Absorb it. This is not the new system. This is the old system that exists and it has created an unstable government in which the, major, the minority is ruling. Okay? Because some people have, the, have heard and there is propaganda that you know, first past the post system uh, gives uh, stability and uh, gives majority rule. I just want you to see that these are... Now, does anybody know why this has happened? Yeah. Why, like even in the first past the post, you don't think that it should happen? Mm -hmm. 
It depends on the location of the people who just work Exactly. There. We are not asking from all the people in the province. So in some jurisdictions, the, the people who, who have been in the NDP, they have won with thin majorities. And it doesn't matter in, if in all of the other places, the most people are voting for liberals. As long as the number of seats in the parliament are the majority, the, the, the power goes to that. The second problem is that um, in the legislative assembly, it is possible that the voice of the other groups can be totally eliminated. This is an example that shows you what you didn't believe at the beginning of the presentation. It is possible that 100% of the people in the legislative assembly are from a party that most people don't like. Okay? So these are the people in, let's say this is North Van. Uh, most people want to decrease the tax, but the member of the parliament, based, based on first past the post, will increase the taxes. In this jurisdiction, people want to decrease the tax, but member of the parliament will vote for increasing the tax. And the same will happen here. So three, three people go to the parliament, all of them are voting for uh, uh, basically increasing the taxes, which is most people don't like the taxes to be increased. And this is possible under first past the post. Now you may think, okay, it has never happened. Let us see what has happened. Just look at this. This is, this is an example. Uh, look at this. In this one, which I skipped last time. Now look what has happened. With 57% of the vote, liberals have 77 votes. If there wasn't two areas that NDP won, it could be 100% liberal and 20% of people and all of the others. Uh, how many percent is there? 43% of people could have no voice. So some people think that it's just because of green. It is not just because of green. Uh, just imagine that, you know, if you are a liberal, think about this. This can happen in the next election. This is not that different what we have here. NDP can go to 50% and get all of the seats. So nobody will hear any voice from any liberal if that happens. The second problem is very clear in this line. We have been very close to 100, so no voice of the minority to be in the parliament. So what I showed you here as a theoretical example, BC has been very close to actually have that. Uh, so there are a number of solutions. Parties have come up with a solution for this uh, thing. And that is coalition. They combine their efforts. So anyway, they form a new party that and then they will win in all of the jurisdictions. In all of the jurisdictions, then they will have a majority. Do you think that this has solved the problem of tyranny of weak majority? So the people in the parliament, they say, this is, let's decrease the tax. No, let's decrease the tax for everyone. Let's and then nobody is hearing the voice of those people who say increase the tax. So it didn't change the tyranny. It will make you happy if you are one of those people. Uh, so before, another group were unhappy and now, not unhappy for ru being ruled, unhappy in terms of John Stuart Mill. They have no voice in the parliament. Okay? So, um, uh, the coalition just changes the balance of power in a first past the first system, doesn't solve the problem of representation. Um, so, um, people also have come up with solutions. The solution that people have come up with is tactical voting. So, so uh, these two major problems that we see theoretically and empirically exist in first past the post has led to unstable governments, contrary to the myth that um, if we switch from first past the post, the government will be unstable. Look at the stability of the current formation of the government. If the NDP doesn't do one thing that uh, Greens don't like, the government will collapse. 
So, is it a stable government? No. Now, look at this. In 1993, first past the post in Canada, Liberals got power with 41% of the vote. They got 60% of the seat, and it's called majority government. Not because, you know, the other thing that you have to notice. When you say there is a majority government, it doesn't mean that the majority of people want it. It means that the majority of seats are there. So in the history of the past 20 years in British Columbia, it was not even once that the majority of people wanted what happened. So, 1993, 41% of the vote got 60% of the seats. The result is an unstable, minority, liberal government, which has 100% of the power. Then, the Canadian Alliance, uh, which was the Reform Party before, and Progressive Conservative Parties, they created a new party, the coalition that we mentioned. So the Conservative Party came, you know, was created, and then uh, they formed a conservative minority government. And so in 2006, we got a, con so basically this was, uh, I guess, Paul Martin, minority government, and it lasted two years and two months. Then we had uh, Stephen Harper, the leader of the coalition got to power, uh, then another election in 2008, another minority government, notice that these are the blue ones, and they don't have more than 50%. Therefore, they had to form a minority government. And for those of you who don't know, a minority government is a government that is had a situation in 2006, the formation of the minority conservative government, 36% of people got the majority of seats, uh, not, not the, the relative majority, and they had to form the government. So this, this is the most unstable situation that can happen. They neither have the relative, they, they neither have the majority in terms of people, nor have the majority in the uh, majority of the seats in the parliament. Then we have another unstable minority government uh, in 2008. And then uh, we have the first shutdown of the parliament by the prime minister in 2008. Then we have the second shutdown of the parliament by the prime minister. Then we have the third shutdown of the parliament. And in that stable first past the post system, people went to the streets to protest very stably. And then, uh, then we have in 2011, the unstable minority government collapsed with a no confidence vote in the parliament, and there was another election, and in this one, the conservatives with 39% of the vote, just two more percent increase from what had in the past, they got 54% of the seats, and they formed a the minority of people formed a majority government in the parliament. Uh, and then again, I, I don't really remember exactly why. At the majority situation, still he tried to <laughs> close the parliament. And uh, then there was another election. This time, uh, again, the, notice that if you have 39% of the vote and your competitor has 38% of the vote, of course, you know, the next election is a 50 50 chance that the government will collapse. That's the reason that, you know, now, the Liberals, with 39% of the vote, got the majority, 54% in the parliament, and formed a majority, but it's called the majority government, because the majority of seats are there. Now, solution. You already know the solution. The problem was that we didn't ask people what is their second and third and fourth choices. The solution is that to solve this information bug, so we ask from everyone, what is your second choice? And most probably about the decrease of taxes, if you ask these people who want decreased tax for businesses, their second choice is just the decreased tax for everyone. Now, if we, if we ask the people their second choices, the method of asking, or the ballots that you saw at the beginning of today's presentation, is called preferential voting ballot. This is obvious that this switch solves the fundamental information problem in the system. Now, the question is that how do we 
uh, you know, basically camps. In, you know, if you think about the parties in Canada, I think all of them, they do this. They ask their people, you know, the members of the party first preferences, and then they check the one that has the least popularity, they drop it, they go to the next one. But because they, they usually are voting in a, like in a stadium or a hall, uh, all of the people that are attending, they do multiple rounds of voting. Okay? It's called runoff voting. Uh, but you know, it doesn't have to be you know, multiple rounds. They can ask you, as we did, what are your preferences? And then, uh, fortunately, it is not 1777, and the uh, computers can do the job. Whatever choice has the least chance of being elected will be dropped. So we go to in a, you know, if it was in a, you know, party meeting, you would say, okay, look, dear green people, uh, you will never be the choice. You have the least preferred, you are the least preferred option. So uh, you have an option to insist, uh, and then the blues will go to power, or you can drop your green choice and think about, you know, give you the chance to exercise your voting power um, and we will look at your second choice. And any rational person would say, okay, look at my second choice, don't drop my ballot into the garbage can. And this will result to this. So basically we remove the green from the domain of possibilities. Why we remove the green from the domain of possibilities? Because they didn't have any chance to be elected anyway. Okay. Now, nobody's vote is in the garbage. Now we ask, look at the second choice of these people, and that reveals the fact that most people like the decrease in the tax. And in this case, a candidate from the uh, decrease taxes for every one party will go to the parliament. Um, however, uh, there is, it is not still ideal. Uh, this, uh, uh, what we did is called instant runoff voting. Basically, the system automatically drops the least wanted choice, and uh, or it is called a single transferable vote in a, for a single candidate. Now, if we switch for the elections of any area from first past the post to instant runoff voting, that's an improvement. At least the the person who goes to the uh, to the parliament would be the representative of the ideas of the majority. So, okay, this yellow person will go to the parliament. However, it doesn't solve the problem of the blue people. But look at the blue people. Blue people, yes, they are minority. They want to increase tax, but they are minority. But they are not represented in the parliament. So they feel that they have no voice. So, yeah. It is better, the, the person who is in the parliament talks about what most people want, but this doesn't solve the problem. If we just convert a jurisdiction's voting system, the final solution happens if we combine the areas. So some of you may think why they are combining the areas. There is a reason for that. Because when we combine the areas, something beautiful happens with single transferable votes, which the, the exact name for it is multi-member single transferable vote, and unfortunately they didn't mention and differentiate it in the voting you know, literature that they distributed in their society. Most people, don't, they don't see the difference, and I've seen people are confused about this. If we combine a bunch of areas, let's say we combine six areas to one electoral district, and then we decide to elect people, and let's say what is happening in British Columbia, actually they are also increasing a little bit, about 10% the total number of members of the parliament. So we have six jurisdictions combined, and we are going to send seven people to the parliament. Then something beautiful happens. Uh, the the parties that have a majority, in fact, those who want to decrease the tax, if you look at here, we have 37 people who want to increase the tax, and how many people want to? 53. 53. So most people want to decrease the tax, 
Verse 37, people want to increase the tax. If it was just if we apply single transferable vote or instant runoff voting per jurisdiction, not switching to multi-member um, uh, single transferable vote. Let's see what happens. Who goes to the parliament here? Decrease, just, just make a, like we, will re, we will remove their first choice, we will go to their second choice, but the person who goes from this place would be decrease. decrease. Here, two, four, five, eight. So here would be the blue, here will be uh, decrease, there will be decrease, decrease, and decrease. So if we just apply a single transferable vote in single jurisdictions, it doesn't solve the, the, the proportionality. Still, out of these six areas, only one member will be voting for uh, increase. increase the taxes. Um, so, but if you go with multi-member STV, which is basically what is in the ballot, the simplest way that you can understand is this. Uh, there is a quota that is automatically calculated based on a formula. And the formula is basically if we want to select seven candidates, we divide it by eight, we divide the number of uh, voters by eight. If we want to choose six candidates, we divide by seven. If we want to choose two candidates, we divide by three. Plus one. This is a very simple formula. So in this case, the quota is 12. That means that if you want to send someone to the parliament, you have to have 12 votes. For every 12 votes that you have, you can send one person representing two to the parliament. That's it. So how many people the blue people can send? They have 37 votes. Three people. So they can spend their 12 votes and three people from this group will go to the parliament. This group has 29 votes. How many people they can send? Two people, and they have extra five votes that cannot send anyone to the parliament. And these 24 people who are green, they can send two people to the parliament. Now, is proportionality there? Yeah, most people are, they, most people want decreasing taxes. Most people in the parliament want to decrease the taxes. The vote is a split between decreasing the tax for the companies or for all people. That is represented in the parliament. And there are people who want to increase the taxes, and their voice will be heard. But they are minority, as they are in the society. And these people will form a coalition government, for sure. Is this coalition government stable? It is very stable. Because if this vote of these people, you know, if one of them convinces the other one that you have to decrease the taxes for everyone, not just for corporations, they are still the coalition government. It would need a huge shift in the public opinion to, to make this coalition government unstable, if it is formed like this. So this is the, the solution. And uh, most of the countries that were uh, colonies of the United Kingdom, they have moved to some form of basically first preferential voting system and then to various forms of single transferable vote. Now, what are the options that are on the ballot? So the first one, dual member proportional, the ballot is like this. Uh, the, the party, you we'll say this is, let's say party A. Let's say this is liberal party. You say our first candidate is this, our second candidate is that. And basically every two jurisdictions will be combined. And they will ask people to vote for a combination. So you can only put one cross on the choice that you are making which basically says that I agree that this is my first choice and this is the second choice. Mm -hmm. And you don't even have a choice to say which one of the two is your choice. 
The way that it is listed is dictated by the party, and it says this is the first choice, this is the second choice. Okay? You choose one of these, and then the way that, uh, so basically you put one mark, the first seat in, let's say, if, we, if everybody votes, and this choice gets, uh, let's say, 39%, and this one gets 30 six percent and thirty percent because this is relative majority this would be the choice of your area and this is the candidate that will go to the uh, legislative assembly the second person will be pending so the candidate who the the party put first will go to the parliament through a first past the post system so does it solve the problem of first past the post system it doesn't solve the problem of representation of the opinion of the people in the jurisdiction. But what happens is that later, when all of the first choices, like from this jurisdiction, from the next jurisdiction, and the next jurisdiction, the first people, when they go to the parliament, then they look if it is proportional or not, and then they will distribute the rest of the vote based on the opinion of the parties, based on the, the way that uh, party chooses, they will say, okay, this guy from this city will go to balance the, uh, the power in the parliament. So there is no guarantee that this second person would be from your jurisdiction or any other jurisdiction. It creates a proportionality but uh, people's intervention in the way that the proportionality is made is minimal compared uh, to the two others. And uh, um, so basically it solves one of the problems, which is lack of proportionality in the, in the parliament, but it doesn't address it in a very natural way. Also to prevent the people who are, you know, extreme, extremist people in the right, in the left, or the, you know, to prevent those people who have their family voting for them to go to the parliament, they have put a threshold, uh, I call it an artificial threshold, of 5%. Uh, if you don't get 5%, you won't go to the parliament. Although it, it is better than 10 past the post, it does not address the, the problems. So basically the way that it will work in a simple situation is that though out of those six jurisdictions that we have, we create these uh, you know, uh, uh, combinations of two, and for example, uh, in now you just think about this. If we run a first past the post vote in this combined jurisdiction, who will go to power? Blue. Blue will go. From here, who will go? First past. Because for the first candidate is always first past the post in dual member proportional. From here, who will automatically go with the vote of people? Blue has the, like blue is majority here and is majority here. If you combine them, it's still relative majority. So blue will go to the parliament. And who will go from this combination? Blue. Okay. So from all three uh, combined jurisdictions, blue will go. So this is what elections, you know, VC will have at the end of the processing of the first candidates of the parties. Now they see this is not proportional, of course, because there are so many people who want to have refinery in different locations. So what happens so here in dual member proportional artificial solution for one of the problems exists, what is not so representative of the region may be not liked by the majority. People must still vote tactically. So if you are in this jurisdiction and you don't want the member of this blue party go to the parliament and you are green, you have to vote for these guys. All of the green, they must tell each other, look, we don't have any hope. So please vote orange. And then with tactical voting, they can send someone orange to the, to the parliament. So still tactical voting will work. The party power in the in the uh, parliament is balanced by the party power is now in the making of the decision of who is the first choice, who is the second choice in each area. They decide the first choice and second choice of people. 
um, the situation for independence uh, is uh, problematic. Uh, if a, you know, the independence must also form a party, and uh, it also puts an artificial uh, threshold for who cannot go to the parliament. And I think 5% is much worse than what the third option would. Like, I think in the third option, it will, it, the threshold will never go below, below 10%. Just listen to me. I don't think that if people adopt RUP, the threshold that the person can go to the parliament would be less than 10%. While now they are you know, scaring people that if you go to proportionality, then, then extreme people go to the power. Actually, the, because let's say if, even if there is um, you know, four people going from one jurisdiction, it would be much higher than 10%. Okay, so now the second method is better, uh, in my opinion, uh, better than the, the first proposal, multi-member proportional. It gives you the option to choose a person from your area by your election, uh, uh, choosing the name of the person. So again, it's a first past the post voting. You choose this person. It will be first past the post. The person who got 36% of the vote, 30, 30, you know, 25, and so forth. The first person will go to the parliament. So it is obvious that this first person still is susceptible to tactical voting and all of the flaws of first past the post. Uh, and then, once this, uh, these votes on the right side of the ballot is counted, then they will look at the other side and will check if that can balance the, the votes. So the most important problem of this second one is that still it is first past the post in nature. And all of the flaws that we mentioned exist. Um, the other problem is that when it reaches to the selection of the party uh, people who go to the parliament, okay, uh, you don't even vote for the second person. There is a list that parties will publish, and they will say, we will use these people in this order to go to the parliament and create proportionality. And then, um, different ways that it can be done is closed list, open list, and open list with party option. When the person from a jurisdiction goes to the parliament as the candidate from your local area, all of them would be blue, and nobody asks you about your second choices. These three other people come from uh, one of these three ballots that are not clear yet which one of them it will be. So the problems that uh, uh, remains with multi-member proportionality is that, uh, to me, it's an artificial solution because the people uh, first go to the parliament with first past the post, and then we are trying to adjust a non-proportional outcome through uh, the party list. The representative of the region may not be liked by the majority, people must still vote tactically, uh, party power influences those closed lists, open lists, or whatever it is, and independent situations again would be uh, in, you know, it will weaken the situation for independence. Now the one that I like, for those of you who noticed what was the problem of first past the post, once you look at the ballot, you know this is the solution. Because we knew that we, the information that is missing is the preference of people. So those who have followed uh, from the beginning of the discussion till now, they don't need more reason that this is better. Okay? This, is the, this is the ballot that asks you your first preference. If you don't want to disclose it, just mention your first preferences. Uh, but also it asks you the second preference, that if your first preference doesn't have majority, then they will look at your next preferences. So it is a multi-member single transferable vote, which was the one that I, you know, theoretically we saw it's the best solution. Uh, uh, it could be worse than this, like it could be single transferable vote in every jurisdiction, which we already saw it's not a good idea. By having multi-member single transferability, it will automatically create the proportionality. And the other thing is that uh, 
the minimum number of people that go from each jurisdiction is not like I say it is 5% everywhere. It depends to the number of people in each jurisdiction and it depends to the number of candidates that are in each jurisdiction. So let's say if there are 100 people and we have to elect four people, what is the threshold? 100, we want to elect four people. So divide 100 by 5, 20, and plus 1, you have to get 21% of your vote consumed or attributed to a person to push him to the parliament. Now, do you want that this threshold to go down? You think that it is not good that 21, you know, if you have 20% vote, you cannot send anyone to the parliament? I agree with you. We have to make the size of the parliament instead of being 90 people, it must be 100 people. Then the number of people from this jurisdiction, instead of being four, will be five. Mm -hmm. And the threshold would be 100 divided by six. And it would be like 16%. Now those people who have 15% of the vote cannot go. Mm. Do you have the budget? You know, do you want to send 200 people to the parliament? Fine. Then the threshold will be 10%. Mm. Okay? And it will never be 5%. So the threshold of RUP is higher than all of the others. And the proportionality is not by intervention of any political party. The residue of first past the post is still in RUP. So that is not, that is not what I, like, would be ideal for me. Uh, but there is, I understand why this uh, MMP exists for rural areas. Because of the nature and dispersity of the dispersion of the people and communities in Northern British Columbia. So, although theoretically, um, I would like to see multi-member, single transferable vote everywhere, but considering the geo geographical situation in British Columbia and the distribution of population, um, um, I think this distinction could be done. Uh, but out of all of the things we have, for 80% of people and decisions, it will be ideal, and for rural communities, I think they will be happy considering their own situation. So there is a residue of first past the post, but it is, I think it is fine. Um, for 80% of the people, the problem of representation will be solved. Tactical voting in cities is meaningless because we are asking people all over their preferences. And the quota is determined by the budget, and uh, it's definitely more than 5%, and there's no chance of, you know, minority extreme groups to go to the parliament. Um, so this is the situation that will happen if, um, in British Columbia, it happens. These are the rural areas with little population. These are urban areas with a lot of population. And what we will do is that we will merge, uh, for example, four jurisdictions in the... Uh, urban areas to form a uh, STV voting system and we will merge two by two, you know, two villages that are close to each other, another two and another two, and a multi-member proportional system for those, uh, you know, dual communities close to each other. Uh, the way that it will work is that for the rural environments, two uh, people would be elected with first past the post, and these two will be adjusted by the party list. I hope that it will be open party list with uh, people's input and so forth. Now, this is a scenario that we walk through to understand an example, an easy example. Let's assume that uh, uh, we give people to choose uh, candidates that are liberal, NDP, and green. Okay? So here we have five people who have chosen a candidate that was liberal, their second choice is NDP and Green. And I made that to be realistic, like if you are a liberal, the chance that your second choice is NDP is low. Most liberals, their second choice may be Green and NDP in British Columbia. And uh, then for NDP people, their second choice is green, and the third choice is liberal. There are some NDP people who their second choice is liberal, and their third choice is green. What is simplified here is that I'm assuming that a lot of people have voted very similarly. We are choosing four people to go to the parliament. We have four candidates. What would be the quota? 
21. So you have to have 21 volts and spend 21 of your voting power, whatever you can call it, uh, then uh, that one person will go. We can imagine that uh, out of these 45 people whose uh, first choice was NDP, they can send uh, how many people? 45? Two. two people. They can send two people. The liberals can send uh, how many people? One. Twenty. Oh, they can send only one person, right? And then the green has 20 votes. No. They cannot send anyone. But look what happens is that after NDP sends their two candidates, how much, uh, how much power they have? The NDP. So they have three votes. Mm -hmm. And their vote is like mostly NDP Green Lib and least is NDP Lib Green. Mm -hmm. Therefore, this portion, 2.68 of their vote, this is the transferability, single transfer. So this 2.68 will go to Green and this 0.34 will go to lip. Uh, to lip, and a green will also go to to the parliament as the result of this automatic distribution of the residue. And now we have everyone in the parliament, uh, and by that I finish uh, my presentation. Art. And the most which is.